this is Moak and today I bring you something very special to you all it's a combo tutorial I'm gonna give some some basic tricks, some hints, some more advanced stuff so let's begin so t we're gonna be using Dante um, I think he's the more complex character the more complete character and most of all I think he's more fun uh, some of these concepts can be applied to Nero not all of them, some are Dante specific. So let's begin. Now, the first thing that you should know is to actually know your moveset, know what your moves can do, what, uh, what ha uh, properties they have, and what they can be used for. So this is gonna be this first part of the video. Now we're, we're going to be analyzing uh, the, the moves we have at our disposal and there are uh, four kinds of moves uh, really. First kind is neutral, like which is basically you don't move, your, character, your enemy doesn't move, so this power out punches the first few hits of combo A. So neither of us you move. Uh, the first three hits of Rave as well. We're static in relation to the enemy. Now the second type of move is knockback. And it's basically a move that sends the enemy away from you. So the shotgun is a great example of that. Just sends the enemy away. The third kind of move is a move that approaches, it moves yourself in relation to the enemy. It approaches you. So this move from Cerberus is a great example. It's forward and style. And the last kind of move, and one of the most important, is the lifters, which is just it lifts the enemy in relation to you. And all of your weapons, they have some combinations of all of the these kinds of moves. Some moves, are, they can act as both. For instance, Stinger is both a gap closer and a knockback. So it's if you want to combo, the Cerberus one is definitely more useful. Because here I'm just, I can just load neutral. And the last hit from the combo A actually lifts the enemy. So you can do that. Um, let's see. Oh, and in the air, uh, there is a second category of move that changes you in relation to your enemy, which is the moves that bring you down, like Helmbreaker. Ball play. Um, I don't remember the name of this move, but the, the ground pound. This move, which is for melee. So there's that as well. And we can uh, use the. Uh, and in the, uh, another very important move in the air is a lifter, which is not bound to your weapons, but your taunt, which is accessy. That basically throws this rose, and if it hits the enemy, it it just lifts him, and you can do a bunch of cool stuff with it. For instance, like you can do this, and now you may be asking, uh, how did I do that combo? Since regular regular revolver it just sends you down to the floor well it's gonna be the next session of our combo tutorial which is jam cancelling right this is our jam cancelling part of 
the tutorial. And what is jam cancelling? Basically, let's go to our skill list. There is an ability called there's an enemy step. When in mid-air, you can press the jump button near an enemy and it will jump. Here it's mapped to the left bumper, which is what I use. Yours is probably mapped to A or X if you're in PlayStation. And later on, I'm gonna show. Uh, I'm gonna explain why I have my jump in such a weird position. For now, you just have to know that it's just jumping. And what jumping does is basically it cancels your animation. So let's do rave. And the fourth hit, it just knocks the enemy back. Now let's do one, two, three jump. One, two, three. So. It cancels your animation if I do it quickly. One, two, three, jump. 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 And oh, of course, I, my timing wasn't perfect there, but I think you guys got it. Um, so you can do that for a bunch of stuff like. Or jump, 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 and I'm just holding my analog stick forward and tapping jump whenever I feel the height is going too low. And this is one of the easiest jump cancels in the game. Uh, another one uh, that I like is the Barog. Because usually you do this to send the enemy down and you remain in there. It's one of the few moves that has this property. But if you can just jump, cancel it. Jump, 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 jump. You can do it for a long time. Another thing that jump cancel is good for is to cancel you out of animations that have a recovery. For instance, the move Redline, this one is back forward in style. It has this long animation, but if you jump, it cups a chart and you can do then do other stuff with it. So I think this is enough for jump cancelling and now I'm gonna go to another very important topic which is loadout and configuration. So see you soon. Now I'm gonna explain some of... Uh, now I'm gonna explain how to set up your controller properly because if you have been paying attention you can uh, you see that attacking with Y and jumping with A it can be very hard because your finger your thumb is traveling so much like so it, it becomes very hard to jump cancel in a timely manner. And your your thumb gets tired really easily. So what I'm gonna show you guys is how to set up your controller so the game is more comfortable for you. And it can be done a number of different ways, there's no one right way. It's just you should be willing to go get out of the comfort zone of the default controls because some of these bindings are really not ergonomic at all. I'm gonna show some options. So here we go to the controls. Now we want to jump cancel more easily. So one way, the, the most simple way to do that is to switch melee attack with gun attack and what this does is it allows us to slide our thumb from X which is melee to jump so it's all in the same thumb it's much easier than moving the thumb 
up from Y and down to A and back and forth. Uh, I'm not super proficient. But... You can either slide or you can press the A button with this, the lower part of your thumb while keeping the tip always at the melee. Oops. This is an option, it's the most unim unobtrusive option, but for me it doesn't work too well. Now I'm gonna show what I do. Which, okay, here in options, controls. So what I do is I keep melee at Y, and instead of moving jump to one of, to either X or B, so my thumb slides easier, I move it to my other hand altogether, so that it's really a separation of concerns. My left hand is only responsible for jumping and controlling the character, and my right hand is, is just responsible for doing the actions. So now we're going to configure the my, my controller, and I'm going to walk you through the process. So jump, I use it to left bumper. Now gun attack, I move it to B. Um, no reason in particular, it's what was available after all my changes. Style action. I move it to the left, uh, right bumper because I just I want my thumb to not be too busy, and having one type of attack and another uh, to my thumb and the other to my index finger really helps me relax. A uh, double trigger I like holding this one quite a bit because I like using what ability an ability that I'm gonna show later. So. To hold, I really like the triggers instead of the bumpers. So that will trigger is to the right bumper. Now lock on, this is really uncomfortable for me. I'm using an Xbox 360 controller and the bumper is kind of stiff, so it hurts my hand when I use, uh, when I hold it too long. So I switched it to a trigger. Now change sword and change gun. Um, I map those to the face button, so change sword to A, and this to X, and this is my final configuration. Uh, why A and X? Uh, basically because A is to the right and X is to the left, and this is kind of why what happens. I have tried switching gun attack to X, then change sword to B and change sword to A. I should try this a bit more because here my melee attack I can slide down to change sword and same thing with my gun attack I can slide to change gun so this is probably better it's just that I'm not used to it and I haven't practiced too much so for now let's do it like this. Uh, the most important thing is find the maneuvers that you want to do here uh, and try to make it as comfortable as possible for you. Ex experiment, explore, uh, see what works on your controller. If you're, you have a controller with back paddles, all the better. I recommend using uh, change sword and gun to those so you really spread out your concerns among your different fingers. Uh, style switching, I think this is good for the for everything. Uh, if you have a back button, you can have switch change target to one of the back buttons. Personal preference, up to you. This is what I use, this is what I'm comfortable with. It's weird, but give it a shot. If you don't like it, you don't like it. Um, I hope you do. So now to the next session of the video. Now we are here at the customization screen and I'm gonna teach you how to pick your loadout for Dante. Um, you, you can cop just copy mine and experiment with this. 
but I'm gonna give you guys my thought process and what I want out of my loadout is two things I want weapons that I use frequently to be easily accessible to one another and what does this mean it means okay my favorite weapons are Balrog and Devil Sword Dante and they are one space within uh, from away from each other because I can just double tap whichever I'm in I double tap from Devil Sword Dante I'm at Balrog I double tap from from Balrog I'm at Devil Sword Dante and now these other two it's basically a, you decide where they should go I have tried having this order Though there are some maneuvers that I really enjoy, it would be rather tricky and I would require a triple switch. So at this point it's just personal preference, see what kind of combos do you, do you like, what kind of order do you want. And this is my rationale for uh, having, uh, uh, for setting up your four weapons. The, uh, get used to double switching, uh, if you play Devil May Cry 4 you already are. So double switching is great for switching back and forth between two weapons that you enjoy to do multiple combos. And I do the same thing with my guns. I have Ebony and Ivory and Double Kalina N, two switches away from each other because it's the they're the best weapons at keeping enemies in the air. And switching back and forth between them is really easy for me. Now I'm gonna explain now the double weapon. Just pick two that you like, really fast, real quick. Uh, triple weapon. This is not something I terribly enjoy. Because there are two reasons. Basically, I switch once to go from DSD to Barog, and then twice to go back to Devil Sword Dante. And I never get used to this odd number. You may get used to three weapons or um, even five weapons, say you want to have a sword somewhere in here, like, some, like something like this. Or maybe, maybe even you set up like this. And have, I don't know, six weapons or all seven and go like okay I want the sword I want the sword like every two switches uh, you have a sword so this you would have to get rid of so sword double switch double switch and double switch back to, to a sword you can set it up like this if you want to explore some combos maybe have ESD here in the middle between Barog and, and Cerberus. At this point, you just explore, do um, see what feels best for you. I like four weapons, and my four weapons laid out like this. Same thing with, with guns. Um, see the things that you want to do. I used to have it them in this order uh, uh, because. Basically, Ebony and Ivory before Coyote was Reflex, and Faust before Double Clean I, and I used to do a lot of things with Men in Red, then use Barog to charge up the ignition, and then use Clean I, and in the air to lift the enemy. I don't do that as much anymore, but the main reason I switched to this is because I like using Jam Cancel then switch my guns to Ebony and Ivory and shoot the enemy to prevent the knockback. This is the sole reason for the change. These two I haven't changed because they feel right where they are. Experiment, maybe you want just two weapons, like just Coyote and Ebony and Ivory or just Coyote and Faust. Up to you. I'm gonna keep doing it like this. So once you set up properly studied uh, what you're comfortable with, change your controller setup, be ready for the next step, which is actually doing some combos, so let's do it.
Now, uh, we are in the most important part of the, the video, which is combo composition. Basically, what I've taught so far is just some, some properties of some moves, so you can just try every move on your own. Like, backstyle didn't show it, it's a knockback. Um, some moves are like your nuke buttons, like real impact. So you can just explore on your own. Um, I'm gonna show a few of my favorites. My absolute favorite moves are with Devil Sword Dante, the sword formations, and there are three high times, stingers and forearms it's just tapping the style button while you're in gun uh, in sword master and inputting different directions like this is back this is neutral this is forearm and what's so great about them is that you can actually use them while you're stuck in an animation like i did here i did stinger stinger again and while I was in Stinger, like, I'm not cancelling anything. So simple moves, you, uh, you can do it very, very easily. Uh, you can hold your style button. Um, this is good for keeping the enemy in the air as you charge something. For instance, like I'm gonna do this and then the drive, and I was holding it, and so I can just charge the, the big gunslinger move with the clean hand and finish it. Like this is a good combo finisher. So sword formations is one of of the Dante's best movement moves and it pairs great with some of his movement options that sometimes have not back like okay I'm gonna do shotgun okay, So you can just explore. Um, Faust. Faust is a very weird weapon and has some very good properties. One of them, one attack, is half throw. And when you press the gun button right here, when the gun returns to you, you can pull the enemy back. So it can be useful, like, say you're away from the enemy and he gets pulled towards you. You can combine that with Devil Sword Dante and the Sword Formations for devastating effect. Let's say I do this, and now the enemy is on my other side. Oh, I, I was near the wall back there. Okay, so this to my other side. So Dr. Foss is really useful, um, you can just, of course, just do this, um, backhand style, it's useful in the sense that you can do, you can shoot separately, and you, regardless of your an animation, as long as you have the hat set up like this. So I'm just holding the enemy and then boom. My problem with it is that Dr. Foss does way too much damage. So if you do that the enemy is gonna die real quickly. And I'm not too fond of it. Man in red, this is another very good attack. It helps staying airborne because 
it kind of lifts the enemies for you. So it makes jump cancelling really easy, so you can just use it to practice. In particular, Barog, you just, you just punch him and lift the enemy. And like, I'm not even attacking and the orbs are just keeping the enemy airborne. And you can follow up with something like real impact. Um, now, the other weapon I want to talk about, Double Kalina, and um, this weapon is kind of bad. Uh, it's way too slow, the projectile is always knocked back, like, this animation takes forever. However, it has one move that is super good, which is Gunslinger in the air. It basically knocks the enemy upwards towards you. But you have to be somewhat directly above him. Really strong, really powerful. Shotgun, shotgun is really hard to implement into your, your combos. The, your best bet is to cancel out of this, uh, out of the shots like this, and then you can either taunt, oops, so that the rose catches the enemy. Or can switch to Ebony and Ivory and try to do something like this. Shotgun is... it's good for movement as well. Especially if you combine with Double Sword Dante. Here I use forearms to keep the enemy close to me. And let's say the enemy is really far away. Here, I kept the enemy close to me. Now, the let's use explore a little bit of the other weapons. Cerberus main moves back and forward. Uh, uh, I mean, just forward and style. That gives the enemy closer to you. Ba uh, back and melee and forward and melee. Like, this is forward and melee. This is back and melee. This is a lift. So these are the, your key moves. This is kind of neutral like it, it's useful for when you're just thinking of stuff to do. So let's say like you're in the air, then back on the ground, back in the air, then you can jump cancel. Also, pole play is good, like, say. You're over here, away from your enemy, and you don't necessarily want to go trick, trick up or trick down towards him. Because another thing that kind of ruins uh, how you play is just abusing trick up and trick down for movement. It, it looks so much better when you use your, your attack as movement. Like, for instance, okay, I'm gonna do this. Just exploring different combinations. Um, so, servers, those are the, your main moves. Now, Barok. The main move that people really like is Rue Impact, which is back and back and style when you have ignition on. However, the most useful move from Barak is actually the drop kick. First, because it's really easy to cancel out of, so you can just keep jumping on your enemy's head like this. In the air, it's really useful. And another 
reason that it's useful is that it's really generous with the angle that works. Like, say I'm really diagonal, it's gonna hit. I'm really vertical, it hits as well. And especially in air combos, it's a really good bridge. So let's say I got my enemy here. Boom. And the reason I'm shooting him is because shooting kind of realigns your your bar up trajectory. Because like here I overshot, and here I didn't. So Abaddon Ivory and Barog in the air is really useful. It's what I use the most. Uh, when I'm just thinking of what to do, I just keep exploring this, along with Sky Star from Tripster. Here, jump cancel, then something. Then use the Swordmaster move to lift the enemy up a little bit. Also, a great move. Here, uh, like, I'm switching directions. Using the Abilene and Ivory to maintain any position. In the air. I'm very missed. So, the drop kick from Barog in the air, really useful. The Swordmaster move in the air, really useful to raise the height. As far as punch mode, it's not super useful for combos, but it's useful for dodging enemies. Like, I'll say, like you just landed and then an enemy just comes at you, you just dodge and then you're around the stuff. Uh, forward for the melee, the lift lifts you, you along with the enemy. Always good. So here I'm just using Trickster, and you can see that I'm switching, I'm switching styles rather often. Because one of the main mistakes of new people playing Dante is like they choose just one style and stick with it. Like okay, here I'm, I'm Trickster, so I'm just gonna do Trickster stuff. Now here I'm now Swordmaster, so now. I'm gonna do sword master, so I, I, here I jump. When in actuality, just switching your styles on the fly gives you so many more options. Now, this is enough for Barok for now. Um, let's go to Cavalier. Cavalier is not a great weapon, but it has a few very good moves. This lift gives you brings you super high, and in the air it's really useful to just keep in the air, keep piling up damage. Let's say you're here, I'm doing the, the style, then back in melee. Now regular melee, and. It's not a weapon that requires a lot of jump cancelling. Like, here I didn't jump cancel, here I didn't, here I did, to keep all the food, here I did, I didn't, I didn't, now I did. And I'm just keeping all the food. But the one move that's really useful for Cavalier is actually exclusive to Cavalier Red, which is why I recommend you use it, which is called Redline, which is not this move, it's back and forth and style. This one. And what's so useful about it? Well, first, you can perform it in the air, like this, so it's a good gap closer.
here I just can jump cancel and use Trickster Dash to go underneath it. Or rather, Sky Star, which is the name of the Trickster Dash. And let's see what else we can do with Rodline. Uh, the jam cancel on this one can be rather finicky. Like sometimes it just does not work at all. Here I'm going back and forth. Here I, I failed. Uh, let's reset, get out of this corner. So this is our, our the most important moves in my opinion. Uh, there are definitely other moves. Like drive is a good is a nice looking finisher. And here from here on you just kinda explore. One move that looks very good is just keep keep the style button held while you're doing a trickster dash. So you do, you do this kind of backflip. And from here on you just combine the stuffs. Um, there are lots of great, great moves. Some of them I didn't show here. But this should give you a good enough basis um, to mix up things. Just remember the useful properties, like this is a lift, this is a lift, this keeps the enemy in the air, this goes down, keeping the enemy in the air, going down, keeping the enemy in the air. Now let's send the enemy upwards with sword. Alright, times. The same jump cancel. And just explore. Um, this is the main lesson. I think we can go to the next step of our of our tutorial. <coughs> All right. So now the this session of the tutorial is going to be double trigger, and for Dante, double trigger does a couple of things. First, it gives him an additional air option. It makes them move quicker, like for instance, like this becomes quite a bit quicker. Just look at the difference in speed, and this can matter. Uh, makes you take less damage, gives you armor. But what's really important is with Devil Sword Dante equipped, it gives your style some properties. Because you gain the summon swords here, the sword formation. And I gain an extra dash, so I have triple Sky Star. Um, this reduces even more damage, gives <laughs> um, excuse me, gives you even more armor. Now Swordmaster, it it makes your would have added reach, which which can be really useful. Um, let's compare it with without. So here the enemy like. Fell, fell to the, the ground. I was lucky to catch him, but they, yeah, my, my thing wasn't as good. Now let's do it and double trigger. Much easier to, to catch him. And also, like, here there's the summon sword keeping the enemy there enough to be, to, to be held. Um, with Balrog, Cartwheel, which is back in style, it becomes a lift. Yeah, I, here uh, I was in Trickster. So 
some moves that matter. Um, this, which is attack and style, push the enemy closer towards you. So it can be really useful. Oh, one of my favorites is actually Long Barrel. Because regularly, it's just it throws the enemy away, it's a knockback. But with Devil Trigger, it becomes a lift. And if, even in the air. So here I fucked up. Here. Just keeping the enemy in the air. Really useful. Now, Gunslinger. It shoots these summon swords to all the enemies that you don't have locked on. And one trick you can use that's really useful is actually letting go of your lock on to have it hit your enemy. For instance, let's do this. I'm gonna leave the enemy with Cerberus, then throw the hat at it, and let the summon swords take him away. So. And this me time to charge this. So this is a couple of use for the swords, maybe you're in the air and you miss a jam cancel and you still want to keep the enemy in the air and you're stuck in an animation so for instance, let's say you miss this cancel, well, switch to Gunslinger and the guns and the swords kept the enemy in the air. And here using cartwheel to keep the enemy there. And you just keep exploring with it. There's a lot of different stuff you can do. Like for instance, I finished this. And here I, I didn't connect the jam cancel, but you could the time is strict for this one, but you you can try doing that. Um you can do like keep doing things with Dr. Faust, uh, something you can do. And it really, you just gotta let your creativity maybe use it after a shotgun blast, so. Let's say you were in the air with the enemy. Here the enemy kept in the air. So here the enemy would have fallen to the ground. Oops. Let's try to do it. Without double trigger. The enemy fell to the ground and whipped out trigger. We were able to catch him much more easily. Uh, Stinger, it becomes this more powerful version. It deals a lot of damage. Going underneath uh, definitely has some uses. So, yeah, Devil Trigger is really useful. Try to explore how to use this sword. Something not many people do. Um, try to explore the different changes to to your regular moves because some of them become rather more useful, like Cartwheel. Like, let's do a hard wheel, and then this. Now, 
Now this, what I did near the end of this, this combo, brings us to the next session. Now Dante has his regular Devil Trigger, as we saw in the last session. Here we're gonna show the Sin Devil Trigger. And what is Sin Devil Trigger? Basically, it's a separate part of the Devil Trigger that you hold your Devil Trigger button and once you charge the red bar, the orange bar, it goes into this transformation. And it's super powerful, there's a lot of damage. has many different moves, um, but it's rather temporary and most people who have played through the game they either use it just as a room cleaner just to kill enemies because it's, the damage is so much or they just uh, don't use it at all and I'm gonna teach a way to actually use it and you need um, let's see if we can find this upgrade here, Quadruple S, when transformed into Sin Devil Trigger with Stylish Rank Triple S, you can press the Devil Trigger button to go back to your regular form. And this is kind of misleading. What it does is it gives you free, uh, 5 free seconds of Sin Devil Trigger that you can go out of. And Let's see if we can go to go to triple S. So here I am, then go into scene, double trigger, then out. So we can go in and out of scene, double trigger. And it's really useful, and I'm gonna show some properties of Sin Devil Trigger. But in the, the void, and this is void only, you can toggle this option for triple S activated. So it's always gonna count as if you have Sin Devil Trigger uh, triple S ranking for the purpose of Sin Devil Trigger. This way you can prep practice a bit better and this is gonna what we're gonna be using so don't pay too much attention to this time meter now this transformation what are its properties because it has a couple first it stops all your animations so let's say we do red line and it's quite a lengthy animation has a lot of recovery now we can do red line straight into the scene double trigger so it's good, it's a very good insurance policy when you want to try something a bit more riskier. Like here I missed the combo, I missed, but... I missed on purpose, but then I fixed it with some double trigger. It takes a while to charge up, so it's not on demand, unless you're always holding the double trigger button. But it's quite useful. Second property, and one of the most important, it stops enemy animations. So, this is a stinger. Now, this is a stinger with sin double trigger. The enemy captain plays. So, let's do red line on the enemy. Uh, 
say let's do this one, which is just a triple stab. Sends the enemy far away. Not very good sending the enemy far away. Here I wasn't fast enough, but let's see if we can do it now. Yeah, with this move it's kind of tricky, but let's use the... Yeah, the, with the shotgun it, it worked well, so... Oh, here it didn't work as the enemy wasn't up, but... Here we cancelled enemy knockback. Um, now, with Sindawa Trigger available to us, at, like such an easy and in between combo, uh, in combo opportunities, we can use it quite advantageously. So, let's say we have. Like, here I use Sindawa Trigger. Like here I miss. And I can just mix it up. So let's say I do this. And the moves I do in Sin Devil Trigger the most. One of them is just the regular com combo A, the the first two hits, because the First hit sends the enemy flying back away. Uh, another one, uh, I like the the gun, and then uh, cancel out of send double trigger and immediately shoot with Abaddon and Ivory. Oops. So you can do have quite some fun with that. The most useful, I think, is stingers. This is the fun the stinger. It's back forward. It's not back forward, just forward and melee. It's the same input as stinger. And another good input is back and melee, because this stuns all enemies in the area, it's quite potent. Then when a few other properties, the jump, it interacts with the enemy. So you can see that my jumping there hit the enemy, so you can do something with that. Let's try it. And here I was using double trigger. I missed. I missed. Missed again, but corrected with fingers. Here I didn't have seen double trigger, now I have. And you can, like, just overshoot. Oh, uh, this move that I use here is the style button, it's a teleport, quite useful, um, let's see, yeah here me just jumping into the enemy has forced him to stay in the air, the, the side dodges is the equivalent to doing this on the ground are also quite good because they give you armor and they're really quick and the best part is they can be done in the air so you can do something like this uh, I'm doing it without the Mustang
And using the property that it stops animation, it, it, it kind of holds the enemy in the air for a, a, a while. Then, then getting out of it real quick. And then dodging to the side. So you can do a lot of things with uh, that, uh, Sin Devil Trigger and uncouple it, uh, com try to combine it with regular Devil Trigger. Here I got rid of the of the animation uh, of a failed red line. And here I caught him. Prevent him from falling. And you just try to combine things, try to explore, know your character, practice inputs. And I think this is it for the tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it and see you soon.